that's right. Hey, everybody, Ashley Koff, dietitian, uh, CEO at the Better Nutrition Program. Um, for those of you who are joining us live, a little bit of technology stuff tonight, um, but we are uh, all sorted. And so while I'm talking right now, in case you see our guests looking down, she's going to share this to her Facebook pages, because remember, when we're live, we like to have everybody be able to share. And then when I introduce her, you're going to see me looking down, which means I'm going to be sharing. So we're neither one of us are texting or doing other things. We're just We're just getting all sorted on social media. So for those of you who are not watching live, just a reminder, first of all, thank you so much for joining. And uh, if you are watching through our YouTube video and you like what you're hearing, please give us a thumbs up um, or share this with someone that you think it would be meaningful for. And just a reminder, um, tonight, if you want to uh, ask any question, I'll be fielding those questions. I may have a pause and wait until our guest has uh, completed her thought or until she's answered a question, all that good stuff. Um, but also, uh, I may May, um, but of course, I'll get to your questions. If we, if you are not watching live and you have a question, um, of course, the question is likely for our guests. So I just want to remind you that uh, that will be no problem. Uh, I will tag Liz and we will make sure that she gets uh, that answer. Now, one thing that is only happening live tonight is the giveaway. So we have a giveaway tonight, this incredible bundle. Oh my gosh, I was checking out this content before. Um, and when I get in and explain who our guest is and what her background is, you're going to be like, I want this bundle. Um, so when we're looking at that bundle, what I want you to do uh, is comment for me one of your, um, if you can identify one of your favorite uh, dinners that you've had with your family. So a favorite family dinner, and we are going to choose one winner for the amazing uh, Liz's Healthy Table bundle, and that is only happening live. So sorry, um, but for those of you who are not watching live, you can win that bundle. Uh, excuse me, you can't win that bundle, but you can get that bundle uh, with the link that I've shared um, as well. Okay. So without further ado, ado um, I want to introduce uh, just an incredible dietitian. Um, I love, Liz, I love your background, and I want to start off with that um, on two different parts, both um, your media background and then also your uh, personal family background, um, because I feel like, uh, you know, so, there's so much information that's out there today um, telling families about, you know, we're, we'll dive into some of that research, why it's so important that we eat dinner together. Um, but a lot of that information is actually a little bit frustrating because um, it doesn't seem based in reality and it's not very practical. So uh, one of the things I think is so incredible is um, you're so seasoned, you've been doing this for such a long time that you know that having right answers isn't the same thing as helping somebody make better choices and, and the tools that they need to do that. So this is my way of introducing uh, Liz Weiss. Um, so Liz, welcome from Liz's Healthy Table. And I thought I would have you start off. I mean, I just think your background is incredible. So you um, were doing On the Menu with CNN. Um, so mm -hmm. it was years ago. So maybe we can start off with your professional background on that start and th on that side. And then we'll get into a little bit of how um, you started helping uh, families do better one playground visit at a time. <laughs> I love that. I haven't, I've always heard one plate at a time. I like this one <laughs> playground visit That's at right. a time. Yeah. So now I have to go back in time. I feel like I'm on a spaceship going back in time <laughs> because I've been a dietitian for quite some time. And, you know, I worked in clinical for a few years and then I just had this like feeling that I could be doing more. I really wanted to reach the masses. And so I ended up getting a degree at Boston University in nutrition communications. And then I got an internship in Boston working at a TV station covering uh, health news. Mm. And then I ultimately got a job at CNN with Carolyn O'Neill, my mentor. Oh. And she hired me as an associate producer. She was covering food and nutrition for CNN five days a week. And she had a weekend program called On the Menu. And that was back in 1987 that I got a job with her. So I was her associate producer and I moved to Atlanta. I mean, here I am a girl from the Northeast right. and I moved to Atlanta, uh, which was really different. It was like, whoa, I'm in another country. Cause I mean, really, I feel like this country is so big that you are in another country when you move to a different part of the country. Um, but anyway, so I worked covering food and nutrition at CNN for five years and it was incredibly fulfilling. I mean, we traveled the country, we covered all sorts of nutrition topics. And then we started to cover food a little bit more when sort of food and nutrition started to merge. Um, so my background, you know, is really based in broadcast media. And then 
that kind of grew and mushroomed over the years into more social media as that kind of evolved. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I had no idea about that connection with you and Carolyn. Um, Carolyn, I had the privilege of my first meeting with her was, I think we were one of two dietitians at a food and wine. And I was like, hey, another dietitian, you know, and she knew everybody from having covered it. I, I didn't know, you know, any of that. And, um, and I think I didn't know, I didn't put the two of you together. So what a power duo of Really? Women, moms, I had no idea on that front. So learn something okay. new about people all the time. Incredible. And then there you, you, you know, and one of the interesting things you've always, you've been using this um, vehicle of talking to people. You, you guys have had a podcast in the back with meal makeovers, moms, you, you know, you've been in that space. And um, one of the things we will talk about a little bit is how we can navigate some of that information in social media and some of these other places. Because, again, I think getting too much information may be as harmful to uh, enjoying better family dinners as, uh, you know, some of the other things that might be on our on the proverbial plate. But so um, I thought this was really interesting. So you became a mom and you you as a dietitian and a mom, um, one of the things that you said, you, you, you had this experience where you were on a playground. So talk a little bit about one playground at a time. Yes. So I wish I had thought of that 25 years ago when I started (laughs) this journey. But yeah. So when my kids were young, you know, as you do, you take them to the playground and you hang out and the kids play and you talk to the other parents. And invariably, when people heard I was a dietitian and a cookbook author, they would immediately say, oh my gosh, my kid eats mac and cheese and chicken nuggets and I cannot get my child off those foods. Or my child is so picky, he won't eat anything green. So I started hearing more and more from parents who were so frustrated because there was all this food at the supermarket that their kids were clamoring for and they were buying, but it wasn't nutritious. Mm. So as this was bubbling up, the news about childhood obesity started to make front page news. So I was hearing two things, obesity, but then just poor nutrition. My kid doesn't eat fruits and veggies. Uh, My kid's so picky. So I banded together with another dietitian who you know, Janice Mm Bissix, and we together created Meal Makeover Moms. We wrote cookbooks, we started an online platform, we started a podcast, and we really became sort of the go-to dietitians in the social media space who are in that parenting world, who are offering recipes and tips and advice based on our experiences as moms, but also our knowledge as dietitians. So our information was very practical, very realistic, and we had a big community of moms online who would always share their ideas, and then we would share those out to the world. So it really became a great community, and um, it was just, yeah, it was based on those, those playground conversations, and I can actually remember hanging out on the playground with a friend of mine. She was a a CNN colleague, actually, who was visiting. She Mm -hmm. didn't have kids. We're on the playground, and who drives up but the ice cream man? And I'm like, oh, gosh, not him again. (laughs) She's like, what's wrong with you? You're such a, uh, you know, you're no fun. I'm like, oh, no, I'm a lot of fun. But these kids are essentially being stalked by (laughs) food all day long, ice cream, junk food. And they, you know, birthday parties. Back then, teachers used to reward kids with junk food in the classroom. It was so bad. Mm-hmm. And so we've really come a long way in, yeah. in, uh, in society, which is a good thing. That's right. And I don't know how much about back then because there's a lot of rewarding going on. So just a reminder, here with Liz Weiss, we do have a contest going on, a giveaway for the live, um, for those watching live. So remember to share with me your favorite family dinner um, as it for an opportunity to win her bundle, uh, the bundle of information. So it's, it's awesome. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things you wrote in the pre-interview questions um, that I want to dive a little bit into um, before we get into the tips, but we're going to be very tip heavy for everyone who's wondering, mm-hmm. is you wrote that, you know, teaching kids and parents the fundamentals of cooking is the secret to great nutrition. And you're somebody who um, is often authoring articles, but is also interviewed as an expert for so many different articles. Um, and I read a couple of them and, you know, I was really surprised that the research um, so blatantly, I, I guess I'm not unpleasantly surprised uh, that we actually have evidence-based research about cook how cooking and this family dinner time. Tanya Tanya Goyette says fish tacos. Absolutely, Tanya. She's Love in that. the running for winning, winning the bundle. Um, so talk a little bit about some of the research as you've been, um, you know, writing about and interviewing people on family dinners, cooking, getting kids together, just so that we remind everyone that what we're talking about here is grounded in evidence. 
Yes. So we know from research, and I can send you references mm-hmm. down the road, of, you know, or mm-hmm. it's later today if you want them. But um, we know from lots of different research that sharing family meals seems to have a positive impact, not just on a child's diet, but also on their language development, uh, on their body weight, on their substance abuse risk. So, mm. so if you look at family meals, the magic number is really three or more shared meals a week seems to start to have these protective effects. So when children eat meals with their families, they end up consuming more fruits and vegetables. They end up having less disordered eating. Mm-hmm. They have a more, a broader vocabulary. I mean, if you think about it, you sit around, you have conversations with the adults at the table. It helps to broaden a child's vocabulary. Um, a lot of research shows that teenagers really benefit from shared family meals because they go through a lot of stress in their lives. When they eat meals with their families, it helps to kind of ground them Mm -hmm. and it takes that stress level down. So we really want to make sure we're having those family meals, but not just sort of sitting at the table like zombies, but sitting and talking in a positive environment. Research shows that when you set a positive tone at the dinner table, your children are more likely to eat a healthier diet. Mm -hmm. And it really makes sense because if you're arguing with your kids, if you're frustrated with your kids and you're screaming at them, you must eat your broccoli they're not going to eat their broccoli. But if it's a fun, positive, wonderful, loving environment at the table, they're more likely to try those new foods. So we want to keep things positive and we want to get rid of distraction. Mm. So the cell phone, television, these are all distractions that take the focus away from the dinner table. And actually when kids are from households where that TV is on and where that Mm. distraction is constant, they end up eating more junk food you know, Mm. more um, soda, more chips, things Mm -hmm. like that, more pizza, less healthy diet when you have that distraction Mm. of the television. I love the way we say like they, because I think also the the parents do too. So we'll talk a little bit about that that role modeling piece when it's on. (laughs) Um, So uh, I I think that's really important. And, you know, one of the things that um, I have a a lot of times, there's a little bit of eye rolling, you know, too, like you just said, I mean, it, it sounded very like leave it to beaver, like when it's in a loving, positive, wonderful, quiet, no distraction, everybody's Mm -hmm. talking, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, let's cut to the chase and be real. And so one of my favorite things about you and, you know, going through the materials. And again, you guys, if you want to win uh, a chance for winning that bundle, you want to comment on what is your favorite family meal for a chance to be entered to win the giveaway. Um, and I think one of the things, Liz, um, that I love so much uh, is you were talking about it has to be practical. It has to be realistic. You know, if I thumb through, if I did family dinner, hashtag family dinners on social media, I see a lot of perfect looking stuff. You know, a lot of the photos mm-hmm. that may not be what reality actually is. Um, So uh, one of the things that um, I think that you honed in on is the notion also of confidence. So you may, as a parent, not actually feel that confident in your cooking abilities or confident that you can find the time for cooking. So talk a little bit about how um, you, like, what are those first steps forward uh, that you can help someone take to improve their confidence um, to creating that family meal? Yeah, you know, I've always said that if you feel like your family's diet is a C or a B minus, I would never say to you, well, you you should get it to an A plus because that's just not realistic. Mm -hmm. But if your diet you think is a B minus because maybe you're eating lots of heavily processed foods or you're getting lots of takeout, you're not cooking at home, get it to a B. You know, Mm -hmm. it's those baby steps. And so the baby steps build confidence because Mm -hmm. when you make little changes, in the Mm -hmm. way you're feeding your family, it doesn't feel so overwhelming. So for example, I always say, if you're eating dinner together twice a week, set the goal of eating together three times a week. Mm -hmm. If you um, wanna get more veggies in your diet and you just say, you know, say to yourself like, I don't even know where to begin, go to the supermarket and don't feel guilty about buying convenience foods, but those convenience foods can be really healthy. You can get bags of lettuce, Mm -hmm. you can get, baby carrots, you can buy dips already made, hummus. And right there, you've got three vegetables, lettuce, hummus, that's a vegetable because it's made out of chickpeas, and then carrots. And so use convenience foods to your advantage. And then just take those baby steps to making nutrition more of a reality. And you know, and and you do have the web, you know, you can search for recipes online. Granted, you're going to get millions of them. But you can be very focused, you might say, all right, 
I'm going to go to parentsmagazine.com because I bet they have a lot of really great recipes for parents Mm -hmm. and you'll find great recipes there or go to my website, Liz's healthy table. And these are all recipes that I've made for my family. Mm -hmm. So start small. You don't have to go to, you know, Epicurious gourmet, whatever, start small and then just start to, you know, build your confidence that way. I love it. So um, we'll get into some uh, some ways to help kids get involved also. So one of the tips that you had was actually assigning roles. So what mm-hmm. are the, some of the roles? And maybe you can talk a little bit age specific. You were saying how great it is to have teens involved um, versus, you know, maybe a five or six year old. So what are some of the roles that you can assign around dinner specifically? Yeah. And, you know, when parents walk in the door at five o'clock and they feel really stressed out, And there's all the distraction because, you know, the kids are hungry. Maybe there's some sibling rivalry going on. Someone's got homework. And then you have to make dinner. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would recommend is that you sit your kids down and either give them a job, Mm -hmm. but that's a fun job. Give them a job or give them an activity. Give them an appetizer, if you will. And that little activity could be that they sit down with one of my coloring books. Someone's going to win one of those, the the bundle of coloring cookbooks. And so, you know, sit down and have your children color, Um, set out some Legos, set out some veggies and dip, keep them busy Mm -hmm. unless they're helping. Mm -hmm. So if they're helping, they might be uh, setting the table. They might be helping you with some food prep. And that food prep might be taking a head of lettuce and ripping those leaves apart and helping you with a salad or putting the ingredients in a mason jar for a dressing and shaking it up. Or going to the fridge and pulling the pre-made dressing that you bought at the store last week, pulling that out and putting that on the table. So when everybody has a little job, then the parent can say, okay, I've got a 10 minute window here where I can actually get this meal organized. Mm. So that's one thing you can do, you know, just having those kids help. If your kids don't help cook, then by all means, they need to help clear the table, Mm. which my boys always did their entire lives. Like no one leaves that table unless you help clear it, load the dishes in the dishwasher and then assign somebody dish duty. So if they don't help with dinner, then you got to give them dish duty. So maybe they'll be inspired to help you with cooking because they don't want to do the dishes. But kids, you know, I always say kids love art projects. They're very hands-on, right? They love Legos. They're always doing something with their hands. They're always in motion. So why not include them in kitchen activities in that creative process? They want to be with you, but you don't want them like crying in the kitchen. You want them doing a fun job in the kitchen and being part of that meal prep. Yeah, I love that. So another tip that you talked about is um, instead of serving everything already plated, the notion of family style. So how does that Mm. help dinner become a win? Oh, my gosh. This is like probably the best tip ever. So, you know, and and when I guess when my kids were younger, I would always plate the food. Mm -hmm. And as they got older, I realized that's probably not the best strategy. The better strategy is to put the food out family style and then pass those dishes around Mm -hmm. because remember your kids all have a role. They're all helping and now they're helping themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they help themselves, all this role modeling, I'm doing this because I'm sitting at my kitchen table. Yeah. You're imagining, right? Yeah. (laughs) All this role modeling is going on. So I grab those fish tacos, right? We do actually, we do fish tacos all the time in our house. So you've got those flour tortillas, pass them around. And now in the middle of the table, you've got uh, black beans, you've got corn, you have cilantro, you have cooked grilled salmon or, or baked fish, whatever it might be. And everybody's grabbing something for their fish tacos. And so maybe my husband grabs, um, you know, I don't know, maybe he grabs the cilantro and then Josh over here says, I'll take some cilantro. And so before you know it, you're role modeling, everybody's having fun. And maybe somebody takes seconds of something. So then the other siblings like, Oh, you took the broccoli, I'll take the broccoli. So it just it liberates your world, you know, when you just put the food out family style, it really empowers everybody to regulate their own appetite, and to try new foods, and it becomes a much more festive kind of environment, even more like being in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And you know, kids like going to a restaurant, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So make it feel more like a restaurant at home. I love that. So on the flip side of restaurant, one of the the complaints that I always hear is, oh, I feel like a short order cook because 
I'm so yeah. excited about doing fish tacos and I have this one that doesn't like fish and I have this one that doesn't like the tortilla and I have this one that doesn't like cabbage and on and on and on. <laughs> so one of the other things that you yeah. wrote is like the DIY or the bar. This is my absolute favorite. It's my favorite way to say to people, I don't care how you get in a rainbow, but like get your rainbow in, you know, pick it, etc. So let's talk a little bit about how DIY um, or the bars, as you were talking about, can be the solution to um, when you have a household of different eaters. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I actually just wrote a blog post about this for today's dietitian. And mm. it's how to survive family dinner when one child um, is a vegetarian and everybody else eats meat. Mm. And that goes to this point of like, if you have a family with all these different tastes, your goal should always be to make one meal, because mm -hmm. we're haggard, we're tired, we're starved for time. So why are we making two, three meals? That's just too much effort, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make one meal. That's a great goal to set for yourself. And setting out these uh, build your own bars are great because you could say, okay, tonight is pizza night and everybody gets a uh, whole wheat pita bread. And then there's all these toppings that you, you lay out on the table and everybody can kind of pick and choose. And then those pita breads, pita pizza go in the oven and everybody has a customized pizza. And it was just one meal with different options, lots of vegetables, lots of color, lots of nutrition. You can do that with fish tacos. You can do that with those nourish bowls that are very trendy right now. So you might have some leftover roasted chicken. You might have some beans. You might have roasted vegetables, uh, some cooked whole grains. And everybody can come and build their own power bowl. I love doing like hard-boiled eggs in those as well. Mm -hmm. My boys love hard-boiled eggs. And that's easy, right? Mm -hmm. And so so um, it's a build your own and it's really fun. And, and the other thing you can do, which really gets buy-in and helps with this meal planning challenge when you have different tastes, and that is to do theme nights. So mm -hmm. Monday might be build your own night. Tuesday might be taco night because taco Tuesday after mm -hmm. all. Wednesday might be breakfast for dinner night. And so when you build these themes and you, you st suddenly get buy-in from your kids because who doesn't love pancakes mm -hmm. and you're going to have a big bowl of fresh fruit on the side. And I don't know too many kids who don't love fruit. Mm -hmm. So before you know it, the theme nights start guiding you to, um, you know, making meals that everybody loves. And then you include your kids. Mm -hmm. You ask them, you know, hey, we've got a couple recipes to choose from. What looks good to you? And because the kids are helping, they're more engaged, they're more excited. So the sooner you can start doing all of these things, the better we start to train our kids to be uh, really participatory and to be brave and to want to try new foods because it's just the kitchen becomes this like big art project and there's color and flavor and fun and it's just like the place to be, right? Mm -hmm. And it makes family dinner so much easier. You know, you've mentioned all these foods that I think people are like totally nodding their heads, pancakes, you know, eggs, like all this other stuff. And yet, we also, there's a lot of, as we mentioned at the beginning, a lot of like right answers on, you know, oh, you shouldn't ever have a hot dog or, hey, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be eating this or like my kid's really picky. So I try to just get something in front of them. And this is where I really think the magic of your background as a dietitian, um, as well at like a dietitian and a mom and also somebody who's done media. So it's like kind of all comes together, which is how do you help someone move along when they're when maybe society is or the messaging that's out there is saying like the food that you're serving is not a good choice, but how can it just become a better choice? So, you know, there's a lot of like your kids should be eating wild salmon and kale and you might be eat, serving hot dogs. There's got to be, to your point, like to go from the C to the A plus mm. seems a little bit crazy, if not even doable financially or accessible or taste wise. How do you move along to maybe that that B area? Like the, what's yeah. the better? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's so many diet styles nowadays. You know, you and I have been in the nutrition trenches for a long time. Right. And this whole notion of Mediterranean and plant based and gluten free and vegan. I mean, this is stuff we were not talking about 20, 25 years ago. So over the years, we have this explosion of all these diet styles and diet patterns. Mm -hmm. And there's really no right or wrong answer. It's it's so personalized. So if you look at me, I'll use myself as an example because I think the way I eat is easy mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people could do this. I tend to eat more of a Mediterranean style diet, mm -hmm. which means it's mostly plant-based, but we eat chicken, we eat beef, we eat fish, we pretty much eat everything. Mm -hmm. We do stay away from these heavily, I say heavily processed foods because mm -hmm. Most foods are processed, you know, mm -hmm. let's face it, you know, they come out of the ground, you have to do something right, with them. Right. So we eat mostly plants, but then we enjoy a whole variety of foods. And so let's say 
your kids want hot dogs for dinner. I always used to say this back in the day when um, when Meal Makeover Moms was was going strong. And again, my new website's Liz's this Healthy probably, Table. But yeah. back in the day, I'd say, you know what? If you're giving your kids hot dogs for dinner, then that's family dinner, which means your mom and dad or whoever the parents are, are probably eating hot dogs as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have hot dogs for dinner, maybe you go with an all natural hot dog. Mm. Maybe you serve it on a whole wheat bun. Maybe you've got a huge salad on the side with it and some fresh fruit. And so you're, you're instead of just having like hot dog on a white bun with French fries, mm -hmm. you're now building this healthy meal around it. So you're shifting. You're saying, okay, we need more plants. We need more whole foods. And we're still going to have that hot dog once a week or once a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm cool with that. But we want to make those little changes. Mm -hmm. So again, no right or wrong answer. But if you think of your diet as mostly plants, then it leaves room for a lot of other things that you traditionally, you know, might be eating. Yeah. I hope, that, I hope that makes sense. Totally. I think it's the quality piece and it's the permission and just sort of that notion of what I'm hearing is like the better upgrades. But what I also love about that is it mm. comes back to what you started at the beginning with, it, which is there's evidence. We're evidence-based to know that when you actually eat together and have a positive experience around that eating, kid, all, there's all these outcomes that we want. So if the hot dog is the enabler for that, like you're, <laughs> there's a win in there. So I really love that. Um, so just reminder, if you want to win the bundle, um, you want to go ahead and submit here in the comments what your one of your favorite family meals is um, that you, you guys enjoy as a family. And uh, Liz, I wanted to, and just, uh, I may have not have told you, Liz, your, um, her website is right below under her name. Everybody else is seeing it. So um, just a reminder, she has tons of other resources uh, for those of you. I know a couple of questions are coming in. We're going to get to those. But for those of you that uh, want to know exactly where to find her, um, I think the other area that, you know, feels um, Pollyanna to people or over perfect is actually not what we're putting on the table or what we're putting in our body, but is the idea of how do we actually create an environment where everybody comes to the table, sits down, and isn't um, doing all of this other stuff. So what are some of the tips for, you know, is there, are there rules where it's the, the phones don't come to the table, but mm -hmm. is it the phones don't come to the table for the kids, for the adults? Like, what are some of your go-tos for creating that uh, time? As you said, it could be two times a week, it could be three times a week, where you're um, creating this dinner space that's going to really optimize um, their healthier outcomes. Right, right. So first of all, rules are good. The, when we hear the word rules, we think, oh, gosh, I'm back in, you know, elementary school. And it sounds punitive, right? Mm -hmm. But when rules are realistic and practical, they're really good. And kids like rules. They like structure. Mm -hmm. They do thrive. You know, if it's too willy nilly, it gets too chaotic. So rules are good. Okay. So if in your household, you say we have a rule that we're eating dinner together as a family five nights a week or five meals a week. That's really liberating because it might be Sunday brunch, it might be lunch on the weekend, so it doesn't have to be dinner per se, but five meals a week as a family. That might be your rule, somebody else might have a different rule. So set those rules, and then when you come around that family table, keep it positive, which means you don't get to yell at your kids at the dinner table because maybe they didn't get a good grade in school. That's something to talk about later. So if you keep things positive at the dinner table, Maybe you have little conversation starters in a jar. Maybe you go around the table and you talk about the best part of your day. Whatever it is to get the conversation going, that's another great kind of, un it's like a, a, a silent rule that you as the parent can have. We're going to keep it positive at the table. I used to always say to my boys, if you diss, you're dismissed, which means Ooh. if you diss the meal, mm -hmm. oh, mommy, I don't like it. It's awful. It's horrible. It's, mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to eat it you got to leave the table sorry, mm. because, you know, I have two kids and when they were younger, if Josh, my older son were to diss a meal, then the younger son, Simon, he's going to follow his big brother's lead and he's not going to want to eat either. So when that dissing starts happening, it's like this negative cascade. Mm. So I used to always say, if you diss, you're dismissed and nobody ever dissed. And so you have to say positive things. You might say, that broccoli looks great, mom, but I'm just not really feeling hungry tonight. Mm. You know, whatever it might be, frame it in a more positive way. Because mm. it takes a lot of energy to grocery shop and do the food prep and not to mention the expense, you know, the time and the actual expense of buying food. So we want to keep it respectful. Mm -hmm. And then the the screens. All right, I'm looking at my phone here, right? Mm -hmm. The cell phone. Um, I always said in my house, and I've stuck to it 
to this day that we don't have cell phones at the table. So just leave them on the other side of the kitchen, turn them off, and then we don't have to hear the ringing and the dinging and the text messages Mm. coming in. Turn the TV off. You might have movie night once a week, in which case you sit in front of the TV and you watch a movie and that's great and you eat dinner. But um, the adults and the kids, you know, again, you got to role model that. And it's really interesting, Ashley, because... I'm an empty nester. I have one kid in college and one kid who now lives in New York City and Mm -hmm. and has a real job. Yay. Mm -hmm. And every now and then my husband and I, you know, we eat dinner together every night. Mm -hmm. He'll be sitting at the table with me and 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 he's got the phone at the table and it's dinging and blinging and he's got the like text messages. I said, Tim, just because the boys are no longer living in the household, this is our family dinner. Mm -hmm. Husband, wife, Mm -hmm. no cell phones. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I had to reprimand the guy, but he'll like, Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that rule. So, uh, and even when the boys would have friends come over, I'd say, Hey, so-and-so, you know, we don't have cell phones at the table. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. It takes away from conversation. It takes away from the fun, takes away from the beautiful food that you want to be tasting and smelling and sharing with your family. So it's not a bad rule. And, you know, you can always say that if anybody has their phone at the dinner table and that phone goes off, you get dish duty, mm-hmm. automatic dish yeah. duty. So there's a little punishment. Rules there, are know? good. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. The, the diss and dismiss and the rules are good. I love that part. And I think, you know, I echo that with you. Um, it's interesting. Funny that you said that we were just actually having a conversation with my siblings and with my uh, older brother where we were talking about um, how easy it is when the kids are not around to turn on the TV or do something else at dinner. So I think that that's a really important one that, you know, can count for um, whether it's date night, whether the kids just happen to be Mm -hmm. somewhere else or, you know, in general. So I I think that's a really important one. Um, So we have a couple of questions. So one of the questions that came in um, is uh, about dining out. So do you have Mm. any tips on how to um, navigate? I'm I'm reading this with a sense of stress around dinners, eating out and and menu navigation. So any tips on that part? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Mm -hmm. Um, Dining out, let's let's look at it through the positive lens. Dining out can be really great because it's a great opportunity to introduce your kids to new foods. Mm. So, you know, you're looking on a menu and everybody, you know, in the family might say, we're all going to challenge ourselves to try something new tonight. So that's a great positive thing. Another thing that I love for parents to do is, you know, you look at a menu and you look at the kids menu and in many restaurants, it's just not as healthy looking as the adult menu. So what I did with my kids, but it's cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So what I always did with my kids is I would say, hey, why don't you guys start by each getting a salad. Mm -hmm. They love Caesar. Caesar is like the gateway for kids. So they're going to each get a Caesar and then you guys are going to split an entree because, you know, they have small appetites. Mm -hmm. So instead of buying two kid meals, they have the salad, they split the entree. And so that way you don't feel like, gee, I've just spent like an arm and a leg on, on dinner. The other thing that's really important when you go out to eat is to be quiet and to be respectful. And it's such Mm. a great venue and and, and avenue for parents to teach manners. Mm. And that is fun too, because you're like, wow, we're in a restaurant. Napkins are on the lap. Mm -hmm. We thank our waiter where we use our inside voices. We respect everybody around us. So there's so many learning moments when you go out to eat. So really celebrate that and take advantage. Go to an ethnic restaurant and Mm -hmm. try a cuisine that maybe you've never tried before. Mm -hmm. I know when I was growing up, we always went out for Chinese food. My mother never cooked Chinese at mm-hmm. home, but that was such a treat, mm-hmm. you know, to go out and experience that and try foods we had never tried before. Mm. So take advantage of that and, and really enjoy that experience. Great. So I have two other questions uh, that came in, one that was sent to me um, privately and then one that's, so I, I have a full, it's almost like a story and a question. So I'm going to save that one for the second one. Um, but the first one that just came in here is what about those food delivery services. So I think by that, I'm going to go with, um, I don't think they mean already prepared food delivery, um, but the idea of things like a HelloFresh or Green Chef or, you know, Mm -hmm. the ones that you can do. Um, So what are your thoughts on that for family dinner? I love that one of our viewers today asked that question because that is an incredible opportunity Mm. all around. Okay, here's, here's why. Say you get Blue Apron, you subscribe to Blue Apron, you sit with your kids and you get to go through that online menu and pick what those mm-hmm. meals are going to be for the coming week. Mm-hmm. So now the kids are making decisions on recipes, essentially. The food arrives and those instructions are so 
great. They're visual. It's such a great entree for kids to learn how to cook because it gives you step-by-step instructions and a lot of the prep is done for you. Well, some of the prep, things Mm -hmm. are measured out, but you still have to slice and dice. Mm -hmm. So knife skills, you're learning all sorts of things. And I find that with a lot of HelloFresh and Blue Apron, I've tried both of those. Mm. The foods are creative. They're flavorful. They're from different parts of the world. So again, you're trying different ethnic cuisines. It opens up a whole new world. I have friends who do Blue Blue Apron, I believe, Two Mm -hmm. teenage daughters. And these friends of mine said, you know what? Our girls have become incredible little cooks Mm -hmm. because they can't wait for that delivery every week. Mm -hmm. So I love those meal services. And I think, um, you know, they tend to be kind of on the pricey side. Mm -hmm. But if it works for your family, that's a great entree to getting kids to try new foods. And then again, you all come around the table and eat together because what a production it is, you know, to mm-hmm. make one of those meals. It's so celebratory, it's exciting, and then you all sit down and you enjoy that meal together. Yeah, I had an experience with a friend of mine actually the other day and she was saying she got three boys under the age of eight, comes home, you know, she works and it's about all, exactly what you were just saying, like they pick out the meals. But it actually goes back to an earlier comment, which was it. she said, I learned to cook something I didn't know how to cook because, because I followed the recipe. And now I go to the store and buy those ingredients. And now mm-hmm. I know it's like in my repertoire. So um, I think as you, you talked about the priciness, it can also be a tool for learning that that isn't something you carry forward. So mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. So the one that was more of a book, um, I might be adding in some <laughs> of, of my thoughts on this part, is I think actually a very important reality um, for one of the barriers to family dinner. Um, so if someone works in the household or someone's hours are different, uh, kids, it tends to be better for them, especially when they're younger, to eat a little bit earlier or said differently, they come home from, from school or from practice and they're starving. And oftentimes one parent or one caregiver is coming home later. And uh, the challenge here, um, and this person was actually feeling really badly about it, um, wanting to know, first of all, if she got credit for family dinner, if she ate with her boys, but wasn't eating with her husband, but then she's mm-hmm. upset that her husband, she's not... She doesn't want to eat again with her husband, but then her husband doesn't get family dinner. And then when do, what do we do with her husband and mm-hmm. him eating with the boys? And so I was like, so first of all, you are like not the only person, you know, the, the biggest thing is exhale. We got to do what we can mm-hmm. do. So what are some of your thoughts on how to, um, because no lives happen to follow the everybody finishes at five and dinners uh, available at six, nobody's lives follow that or barely, you know, uh, on a regular basis. What are some of the ways that we can get the credit, those health outcomes that we were talking about from the research in the beginning without with a less traditional approach mm-hmm. to family dinner? Well, I'm glad that question popped up because as we've been talking, Ashley, I, I've been wanting to bring that very point up, but then my brain is like off yeah, on other things. Good, good. So, <laughs> so it's a common question. It's a common situation. Mm-hmm. I strongly believe, and the research shows that it doesn't have to be the, you know, the leave it to beaver family that's sitting at the table. As long as there's an adult at the table, mm. it can be a caregiver. It can be a grandparent. It can be a neighbor. It can be the mom or the dad. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. So if those kids are eating at five o'clock and mom is home and mom sits down with the kids, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You got your family meal. Mm-hmm. So poor husband comes home. Then what? He, he's like, Hey, I didn't get my family meal. Mm-hmm. But maybe there's a, um, a before bed snack. The kids are having some mm-hmm. applesauce or something before they go to bed. Dad gets home or mom gets home later, sits with the kids for that snack. Mm. Um, that parent who wasn't there for the family meal, they're the one who gets the, to put the, you know, they get to, to put the kids to bed and read that, mm-hmm. that story, that book. Mm-hmm. So there's that language development piece going on when you read to your kids. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to leave that parent out completely who comes home later. So save the snack if there is, a, or a little dessert that might be happening mm-hmm. a little bit later, save the, the, the bedtime book. And then make weekends a bigger deal. Mm. Brunch is huge with millennials. You know, everybody, yeah. millennials love brunch. Yeah. Um, going to breakfast, making the weekends a bigger deal. Sunday supper. Wow. Isn't that a great one for mm-hmm. so many families, especially extended families? So you still get the benefit mm. with that one parent. And I would say, um, you know, if that once the kids get to bed, right, and now your husband or your wife sits mm. down to eat. You could sit together. That's when you get to have a little glass of wine or something, mm-hmm. right? Um, while the other person eats their dinner. So it doesn't mean, you know, you you can squeeze it all in, right? Mm-hmm. It takes a little juggling, but yeah, that one ad, one adult with the kids really does count, and mm-hmm. it makes a big difference. 
gosh, I love the whole notion. I hadn't thought about it too, of like sort of the, the, um, uh, waiting in the anticipation around dessert, whether it's dessert, you know, my wine is my dessert or whether it's dessert, you know, that they're having. So, you know, I, I really love that concept. I also think, um, community meals and especially, you know, you were, you were saying like, it can be whatever adult. Um, I had a great experience when I was living in DC not too long ago where, um, there were kids from, uh, families that didn't have the opportunity. These families were not going to come together. There were, you know, issues in the family or, or who was available. Um, and so a community member actually brought the kids together for, uh, he and his wife brought the kids and had them come over once a week for dinner. So I think there are a lot Mm -hmm. of ways, um, in the community that we can do this. Um, I knew this would happen. I could talk to Liz and ask her questions and have you ask questions on, on her behalf or on have questions come up for like several hours here. Um, but the good news is, is that she has so many amazing resources at Liz's Healthy Table. Um, and so I'm very excited to be able to introduce you to all everybody to her and, uh, you know, share this and really think about it. If there's somebody, you know, whether um, maybe it's going into the summer and you're going to be spending time as a family together, um, maybe you guys want to sit down and watch this. Hopefully it was fun and engaging, um, or you want to watch it with uh, some of your, uh, um, call it your, your friends and, and uh, parents in the community as a way to um, come up with some tips and some commitments. I think that could be really great because, uh, you know, just going back again to um, Liz's expertise as a dietitian and as a researcher, there is research. And what we really want to do is make it easier to have better health outcomes. And that's why I loved when uh, you brought this topic up. I was like, we've, we've got to start finding ways to do this. And you've given uh, so many great tips to help people just move along the, the trajectory. So thank you. I'm very grateful. And and I had so much fun being here. And I will say, Ashley, that for me, at the end of the day, a lot of times it's about those recipes and giving mm-hmm. people that confidence in the kitchen. And mm-hmm. I do have a podcast called Liz's Healthy Table, and I'm on episode 52 as of today. And so people can tune in and there's always lots of ideas yes. with that really with this goal of getting people into the kitchen yeah. and enjoying those meals together. You know, I'm going to make a suggestion. You need to have my podcast partner, Robin O'Brien from Takeout uh, with Ashley and Robin. You need to have her on your podcast because I feel like um, talking about recipes for families with allergies, um, you know, and her whole allergy oh, yeah. kids piece. So remind me and let, let's make that yes. connection so that That's we can a do show. that. That's a show I've been wanting to do and my community has been asking for right. it because, you know, we talk about picky eaters. That's a whole different topic from a kid with an allergy and that really sets a whole new dynamic at dinner time. And yeah. so that's a big challenge. I'd love to have her on. Yeah. And she's got four kids. I mean, a couple are off to college now, et cetera, but I think that that would be a great one. So I love it. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Thanks everyone. We'll, we'll see you next week. Take care.